Hello everyone, this is Unit 1, My Home is My Castle. Our topic for today is informal letter. Let me give you the objectives of our lesson. First, you're going to read an informal letter describing house for rent. Second, to write an informal letter or email. Welcome to English 33207, and this is Teacher May, your English teacher. Unit 1, writing an informal letter or email describing a house for rent. But first, let me give you some tip. When we write an informal letter or email to a friend describing a house for rent, we can divide it into five paragraphs. We start our letter with dear plus our friend's name. In the first paragraph, we write our opening remarks and the reason for writing our letter. In the second paragraph, we describe the location of the house and give details of the rent. In the third paragraph, we describe the exterior of the house. What is it made of? Garden, etc. In the fourth paragraph, we describe the, in, the interior of the house. Examples, floors, rooms, furniture, special features, and so on. We start each main body paragraph with a topic sentence. A sentence which introduces or summarizes the paragraph. In the last paragraph, we write our closing remarks and sign off using yours, best wishes, etc. plus our first name. We can use a variety of adjectives to make our descriptions more interesting to the reader. Analyzing the rubric. Read the rubric, look at the underlined phrases, and answer the questions. Read along with me silently. Peter has been looking for a summer house to rent on the coast of August. He has asked his friend, Laura, to find a house for him. Laura has found a suitable house and is going to write Peter a letter describing the house and giving rental details. Now the questions are, number one, who is going to write a letter? To whom? What is the relationship? Number two, what style is appropriate? Formal, when you write to someone in authority. Semi-formal, when you write to someone you do not know very well. And informal, to someone you know very well. So which one do you think would be the best style? Is it formal, semi-formal, or informal? Number three question. Which of the following would you expect to find in Laura's letter? Tick accordingly. First, description of the outside. Second, description of the inside. Third, location of the house. Fourth, historical details. Next, weather conditions. And finally, the rent.
I'll give you a minute or two to jot down your answers. And then we will go back and check if your answers are correct. Okay, now let's go over and check the answers to the questions. Let's read the short passage again. Peter has been looking for a summer house to rent on the coast of August. He has asked his friend Laura to find a house for him. Laura has found a suitable house and is going to write Peter a letter describing the house and giving rental details. So here are the answers. Laura is going to write a letter to Peter. They are friends. The second question, what style are we going to use? Definitely it will be an informal style. It is more appropriate because they are friends and so they know each other very well. And third, which of the following would you expect to find in Laura's letter? First, description of the house outside. Then, the description of the house inside then the location of the house, and finally, the rent. How much does it cost to rent the house? Did you get that correctly? I hope everybody did. Analyzing a model text. I want you to look at this house carefully and in my next slide, we are going to analyze another text or passage. Here is the passage. This is an email sent to Peter. And let me read it to you. Dear Peter, how are you? Hope everything's okay. I'm writing to let you know that I think I've found the perfect summer cottage for you. It's in a really nice location. It's a quiet area, but the best thing about it is that it is less than a kilometer from the sea. Also, the rent for the cottage is only 150 pound a week. The house is really charming outside. It's an old brick farm building which has been converted into a holiday cottage. It's got a patio and, a, and is surrounded by a beautiful garden. Inside, the house is nice and comfortable. It has two floors. On the ground floor, there is a cozy living room and a kitchen with all the modern equipment you would expect as well as a dining room and a WC. Upstairs are two small bedrooms and a bathroom. The house is fully furnished, so you don't need to worry about that. Let me know if you like the sound of it. I can easily talk to the owner, Mr. Smith, for you. I hope I'll see you here soon. I'll tell you all of any news then. Yours, Laura. So this is the letter that was sent to Peter. Okay, we have just read the letter that was sent to Peter by Laura. Now let's find out which words or phrases does Laura use to describe the interior of the house and what words or phrases did Laura use 
to describe the exterior of the house. So when you say interior, that's the inside, and exterior, that's the outside. And which paragraphs did she mention this? Let's find out. Well, in paragraph 3, Laura mentioned or described the exterior. And she said, it's charming. Old brick farm building, holiday cottage, has a patio and a beautiful garden. That's the exterior part. And in paragraph 4, she mentioned the interior. Nice and comfortable. Two floors, cozy living room, kitchen with modern equipment, dining room, WC, two small bedrooms, bathroom, and it's fully furnished. So this is how Laura described the house to Peter in her email. In this next slide, we are going to study the table, then find examples of informal style in Laura's letter. But before we do that, let us discuss first the informal style and the former st formal style. When you use informal style, we use abbreviations. Example, I've got for I have got. Second, simple linking words. Example, but, so, and, and etc. Third, informal style uses shorter sentences. Example, I'd like to see you. Shorter sentences. Then, personal tone. Personal tone, example, I've got some great news. That's personal tone. And finally, Everyday expressions can be written in informal style. Example, thanks a lot. So let me repeat the informal style. We can use abbreviations, simple linking words, shorter sentences, personal tone, and everyday expressions. How about the formal style? Informal style there is no abbreviations used. So you have to say, I have got. Second, formal linking words. Example, despite. Okay. Formal linking words. Then, formal style has longer sentences. Longer sentences. Then, we have impersonal tone we usually use the passive voice here impersonal tone and lastly formal style uses formal expressions i look forward to hearing and so on so let me review the formal style no abbreviations formal linking words longer sentences, impersonal tone, formal expressions. When do we use the formal style again? We usually use the informal style when we know the person we are writing to or they are our close friends or maybe our close relatives or companions. We usually use the formal style when we write someone who is in authority, like me as a teacher. In this slide, we are going to discuss informal style and formal style. 
So before we study the table, then find the examples of informal style in Laura's letter, let us first de define and differentiate informal style and formal style because you will be using this later on in our writing activity. First, the, the informal style. Informal style uses abbreviations. Example, I've got. Next, simple linking words. Examples, we have but, so, and, etc. Third, shorter sentences. Example, I'd like to see you. I'd like to see you. Shorter sentences. Then, personal tone. Example, I've got some great news. Okay, personal tone. And lastly, everyday expressions can be used in writing. Example, thanks a lot. So let me repeat the informal style. We use abbreviations, simple linking words, shorter sentences, personal tone, and everyday expressions. Now let's move on to the formal style. How do we write a formal style? First, no abbreviations. You have to spell it out. I have got no abbreviations. Second, formal linking words. Example, despite, however. So these are formal linking words. Next, longer sentences. When you write in formal style, we usually use longer sentences. Then we have impersonal tone. When you say impersonal tone, example of that is passive. Okay, passive. Finally, formal expressions. Example, I look forward to hearing you soon. So that's formal style. So let me repeat the formal style. No abbreviation, formal linking words, longer sentences, impersonal tone, and formal expressions. Having said that, which do you think is easier to write? Informal style or formal style? Well, it depends also to whom are you writing? To whom are you going to send a letter? Example, in my case, if I am going to write a letter to the director, school director, definitely I'll be using formal, formal style. But if I'm going to write a letter to my best friend back home in the Philippines, I can just use the informal style. Okay, so now let's go back to the table and find the examples of informal style in Laura's letter. Definitely, Laura used the informal style because Laura and Peter are both friends. So she can just use the informal style of writing. Okay, so here it is. The abbreviations that Laura used are, first, hope everything's okay. So she abbreviated okay. Second, 
I'm writing instead of I am. So she just used I'm writing. Second, I've found. That's the short for I have found. Then she used it's in. It is in. And then she also used it's an or it is an. She also used it's got instead of it has got. Then I'll see you instead of I will see you. And she also used I'll tell you instead of I will tell you. So these are some of the abbreviations Laura used in her writing. Second, let's talk about the simple linking words that she used. And what are these? But, so, and, as well as, and also. So these are the simple linking words she used in the letter. And what about the shorter sentences? Example, how are you? Hope everything's okay. And it has two floors. These short sentences Laura used in describing or writing Peter. And then we have the personal tone. When you say personal tone, it is something uh, coming from you. It's more personal. It's like sometimes emotional, you know. Example, I'm writing to let you know. I've found the perfect summer cottage for you. With all the modern equipment you would expect. You don't need to worry about that. If you like the sound of it, I hope I'll see you. I'll tell you all of my news then. So these are all written in a personal tone. And lastly, Laura uses everyday expressions. What are these? Hope everything's okay. The best thing about it is you don't need to worry about or you don't need to worry. And lastly, let me know. So guys, when you are writing an informal letter, you can use or apply all this. Abbreviation, simple linking words, shorter sentences, personal tone, and everyday expressions. I think it's easier to write informal letter compared to formal letter. Okay. Do you have any questions? Well, if you have any questions, you can write it down in the comment section of our Google Classroom, and then I'll go over and answer all your questions. So moving forward to the next slide. In this next slide, we are going to discuss opening and closing remarks. What are Laura's opening and closing remarks? Which of the following can you use instead? Why can't you use the others? A. Thanks for your letter. B. I feel obliged to write to inform you. C. Sorry, I haven't written for so long. D. Get in touch with me soon. E. Looking forward to hearing from you. And F. I look forward to receiving a prompt reply. So let's find out which of these words or remarks did Laura use in her letter. Well, 
In Laura's opening remarks, she used, How are you? Hope everything's okay. A and C can be used instead. Okay, so we have A and C. All right. Next one, what about Laura's closing remarks? All right. What did Laura use as her closing remarks? Well, she used, let me know if you like the sound of it. I can easily talk to the owner, Mr. Smith, for you. I hope I'll see you here soon. I'll tell you all my news then. So, therefore, D and E can be used instead. So, B and F cannot be used because the language is too formal. Remember, it's too formal. All right, the correct answer for number one is A and C. That's for the opening remarks. And for the closing remarks, the correct answer is D and E. Did you get that? Well, I hope everybody got that correctly. Well, here are some important tips when we are doing a descriptive writing. These are some words that you can use later on when you do the writing activity. So how would you describe the roof? Okay, so some of the words that you can use to describe the roof of the house would be thatched, tiled, or flat. Thatched, tiled, or flat. How about the windows? You can say double glazed or French window. Double glazed or French window. Well, how about the garden? How would you describe the garden? Is it a vegetable garden? Is it a front garden? Is it a back garden or is it a rose garden? Vegetable, front, back, or rose garden? Well, how about the door? How would you describe the door of the house? Is it sliding, front, back, or glass? Is it a sliding door? Is it a front door, a back door, or a glass door? And how about the room? Is it a dining room, a cozy room, a spare room, a living room, comfortable room, or a spacious room? Let me repeat that. Dining, cozy, spare, living, comfortable, or spacious. So that's how you're going to describe the room. And lastly, the furniture. How are you going to describe the furniture? So we can say it's modern, antique, old-fashioned, classic. Let me repeat that. Modern, antique, old-fashioned, classic. So right now, I think you have... A vivid idea on what you're going to write in your descriptive writing later on because you will be having a writing activity but you can use all these words okay you're going to use these words in describing the house in your writing activity So let me give you a short written description on how to use those words. And here it is. A tiled roof and double glazed windows. It has got a small front garden and a large back garden as well as a garage and a driveway. 
The front door is a big heavy door that leads into the entrance hall. There are four rooms downstairs, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and a small bathroom. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms, a large bathroom, and an attic. Most of the furniture is antique, although the kitchen is very modern. Class, here are some of the vocabulary words that you can use in your writing. Double glazing. Double glazing is a noun. Windows that have two layers of glass with a space between them, designed to make the room warmer and to reduce noise. Double glazing. Next word, French windows. French windows, it's a noun. A pair of glass doors, usually opening from the back of the house into its garden or yard or balcony. French windows. Next word is cozy. Cozy is an adjective. It means warm, comfortable, and safe especially because of being small or confined. Cozy. So let us read the words again. We have double glazing. Please repeat. Next, French windows. Please repeat. And cozy. Please repeat. Right now, it's discuss and write time, okay? So, let's read the rubric and underline the key words, then answer the questions. Okay, so I am going to read this short passage and then you will follow along with me silently, okay? Let's begin. Your friend wants to move to your area and is looking for a house to rent. He or she has asked you to help. Write a letter to your friend describing a house you have seen and giving further details. Let me repeat. Your friend wants to move to your area and is looking for a house to rent. He or she has asked you to help. Write a letter to your friend describing a house you have seen and giving further details. So number one, what type of writing is it? Remember that you're writing to your friend. So what type of writing you're going to use, what style? Number two, who is sending the letter? What is the relationship between you and the recipient of the letter? When you say recipient, it means the receiver of the letter. So who is sending the letter and what is the relationship between you and the recipient of the letter? Number three, what style is appropriate? And you need to justify your answer. Whatever style you will say, whether it's informal or informal, informal or formal letter, justify your answer. And number four, what information do you need to include in your letter? What information do you need to include? And lastly, what opening and closing remarks can you use? What opening and closing remarks can you use? So guys, you have to remember all these things when you do your writing, okay? So all these five questions, you can answer this 
by writing it in a paragraph form. Okay? Let's move on. So, your friend wants to move to your area and is looking for a house to rent. He or she has asked you to help. Write a letter to your friend describing a house you have seen and giving further details. So this must be the words that you have underlined. Your friend, and then you underline, move to your area, okay? And then this one, looking for a house to rent. And then you also underline, ask you to help. Ask you to help. Did you get that? And then you are going to underline also describing a house because it's the house that he is looking for. It's not a beautiful spot or anything else but a house. And then underline also giving further details. So here are the answers. Number one. An informal letter to a friend giving information. Definitely use informal letter. Number two, I am sending the letter to a friend of mine. He or she is your friend. So that's why you're sending an informal letter. Number three, an informal style is appropriate because the letter is to someone I knew very well. Or I know very well because they're both friends so she can just write an informal letter number four the location the description of exterior and description of interior and of course the rent these are the important details that you need to incorporate in your writing because your friend wants to know the location where the house is located and description of the exterior. How is it outside? What can you see outside of the house? And the description of interior. And also how much does it cost to rent that house? Okay. And moving forward, number five, that the, these are the suggested opening remarks. Hi, how are you? How's it going? And for the closing remarks, you can say, let me know what you think, or give me some feedback, or let me know your opinion about this letter, or whatever you like, okay? Since this is just an informal letter, okay? So I hope uh, you have an idea on what you're going to write in your writing activity. So guys, let's move on to the next slide. So it's 32 Beach Lane. All right, did you get that? 32. In number two, it's garden, large garden at the front and a garage and how about the interior fully furnished bathroom uh, uh, upstairs then two bedrooms a bathroom and downstairs you have a bathroom a living room and an old fireplace fireplace and a dining room and large kitchen and then how much is the rent how much do you think Perfect. It's 800 a month. Okay? 800 a month. So I repeat the answers. The location is in 32 Beach Lane. The exterior has a large garden. The interior has upstairs, it has a bathroom. And number four, downstairs, it has an old fireplace. And number five, the rent, the cost is eight pounds a month well 
So those are the correct answers. So how many of you got that correctly? All right, good job. You must have been listening carefully to the conversation. Congratulations then. And now we have come to the last part of our lesson and which is the writing activity. Okay, so you're going to use the information in example 4B to answer the questions in the plan. Then write your letter. You can use the letter in example 2A as a model. Okay, so here's the plan. So you're going to write your introduction. All right, so you say dear and then you put your uh, friend's name. In your introduction, in paragraph one would be your opening remarks. And then in your main body, paragraph number two, where exactly is the house? How much is the rent? In paragraph three, what is the exterior like? The material, the garden, and any description you can write. And in paragraph four, you can write what is the interior like, how many floors, rooms, or furniture. And in conclusion, in your paragraph number five, what would you do next? Give phone number, book it, and then write your closing remarks. Yours, or sincerely yours, then your first name. All right? So, by this point, or at this point in time, I believe you are ready for your writing activity. So you can now get your pens and paper ready and start writing. Okay? So good luck, everyone. So I'll be expecting your written activity. You can pass it in our Google Classroom or you can hand it to me. Okay? So thank you again. This is Miss May and this is English 33207. English for Communication, Matthew 6. Thank you and everybody have a nice day. Bye for now.